بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میں اسلام علیکم پاکستان گڈ ٹو سی یو بیک لیڈیز اینڈ جنلمن اینڈ ویل بی موونگ آن ٹو دا سیکنڈ پارٹ آف دی سبینز آکسلی ایکٹ ٹو تھاؤزینڈ اینڈ ٹو ناؤ لیڈیز اینڈ جنلمن بیسکلی دس ایکٹ لائک یو آر اسٹڈنگ ارلیئر ریوالوز اراؤنڈ دا ڈفرینٹ رولز اینڈ ریگولیشنز وچ آر اپلائڈ آن دا ڈفرینٹ کمپنیز اسپیشلی ان دا کانٹیکسٹ آف دا سیکورٹیز ایکسچینج کمیشن آف پاکستان اینڈ اگین دی امپارٹنس آف آڈٹ اینڈ دا رول آف دا بورڈ Uh, is supreme in this particular act now moving forward what we see is that there is the audit committee and this audit committee is a new improved audit committee and when we look at that the members from among the directors of the board of the company but all are independent directors so again the new improved audit committee has independent directors so that there can be no uh, influence and there can be no conflict of interest Now, the audit committee is responsible for appointment, fixing fees and oversight of the work of the independent auditors. The committee is also responsible for establishing and reviewing the procedures for the receipt and treatment of accounts. So again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what we see is, is that there is a, a great responsibility calling upon the uh, audit committee and again, what it has to oversee and ensure transparency, accountability. integrity and the veracity of the accounts so that is extremely important in the surveillance oxley act and across the world this uh, framework is being followed to ensure that there can be good governance and good corporate governance a very important aspect of this particular act is also the conflict of interest now in the conflict of interest the public accounting firms should not perform any audit service for a publicly treated company if the ceo CFO or the chief accounts officer controller or any person serving in an equivalent post or position was employed by such a firm and participated in any capacity in the audit of that company during the one year period preceding the date of the initiation of the audit so again to ensure transparency what we see is and to eliminate conflict of interest this very important clause is positioned in the surveillance oxley act and the ceo cfo ceo or the controller of accounts cannot be from the same audit firm because if they are then again there is a conflict of interest and that has to be watched properly or otherwise again there would be chances of financial uh, inappropriateness and also of accounting bunglings now another very important aspect is the audit partner rotation mandatory rotation of the lead partner a lead coordinating partner the lead auditor and the partner reviewing audit once every 5 years so this is again a check and balance that uh, all of the team uh, would change and a new team would come in at least once every 5 years so that they can review the performance of the previous team and it does not become uh, a, uh, a a monarchical type of position whereby uh, they remain in this very influential position and then they can dwindle in the different Uh, performance of audit now another thing is prohibition of non audit services uh, under the sox act auditors are prohibited from providing non audit services concurrently with audit financial review services such as bookkeeping financial information system design and implementation so what we see is is that the auditors cannot provide uh, non audit functions either because then again there is a conflict of interest and in that conflict of interest Uh, the auditor would be getting some sort of remuneration which could lead to a compromise in their audit because of a joint interest so that is very important that uh, nor can there be a conflict of interest of the audit services nor can there be any non audit services which are given to the company by the auditors because that again would undermine the very essence of these audits and the audit, audit committee the appraisal or valuation services uh, fair opinions actuarial services internal audit outsourcing services management functions or human resources uh, broker or dealer investment advisor or investment banking services legal services or expert services unrelated to the audit so all of these things are not allowed even though in many cases uh, some would seem to be uh, deviant from the audit but that joint interest would be a conflict of interest and therefore the external auditor must be completely absolved of any or any type of conflict of interest 
and must be able to perform their responsibility without compromising because of some joint interest which exists with the company. The CEOs and the F CFOs required to affirm the financials. The CEOs and CFOs are required to certify the reports filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission, returning of bonus and any other incentive received by the CEO and CFO in case of material non-compliance and statement. So again, the CEO is going to sign it, the CFO is going to sign it, and it is their responsibility that everything written in the report is absolutely over the board, is transparent, is merit-oriented, and is uh, accountable. And there is basically nothing which revolves around window dressing or the concealment of facts related to the accounts. So uh, again, uh, what we see it that this uh, applies to equity-based compensation received during the first 12 months after initial public uh, offering. False or improper certification can attract fines ranging from $1 million to $5 million or imprisonment up to 10 years or both. So this is the level of uh, stringency which exists within the Sarbanes-Oxley Act that uh, it could go up to $5 million in fine and also 10 years of imprisonment. Or it could be either of the two or it could be combined both ways. What we see is, is that in the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, the uh, role of the audit committee has increased, has enhanced, and there is more responsibility on their shoulders. And secondly, we also see that uh, there can be no duality of role, there can be no duality of functionality, and there can be no uh, conflict of interest whereby non-audit uh, services or non-audit products are exchanged uh, with the auditors between the company because that again would develop an interest of payment which would compromise the uh, audit in the long term. So all of this is written and then very stringent punishment according to the surveillance Oxley Act to ensure that people do not indulge in such practices and remain sincere and professionally astute towards the responsibility of ensuring proper audits and also ensuring that the financials are maintained uh, according to uh, rules, laws uh, and the convictions of the state and that this uh, particular company that uh, the audit committee uh, is concerned about can act independently. Thank you so much.